Well, hey everyone, welcome to the Spine Health Foundation Facebook Live. We're so glad you're here today. I'm Erica Anderson with the Spine Health Foundation. And today I'm excited to have my friend Mary Johnson on. She's a running coach and the founder of Eat, Lift, Perform, Run, Lift, Perform. Sorry, <laughs> I just said it wrong. Uh, Mary, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, we are excited to be talking with you because this month our theme is prevention and wellness. And we know that's something that's really important for athletes. Runners especially have to be really vigilant about not getting injured, protecting their backs. That's very essential in the process. So before we launch into all of the questions about those things, I would love to hear a little bit about your background as an athlete and as a coach and then how you founded your business. Yeah, so I um, I row Division I uh, rowing crew when I was in college, um, and I actually stayed injury-free. I didn't have any back injuries then. Um, and after college, I tried staying with the rowing world for a while and then um, ended up shifting to running in 2010, ran marathon here and there, and then um, ended up taking it a little bit more seriously starting in 2014, 2015. Um, and then I started um, doing strength coaching in a gym. I had a career shift in 2015. Um, so I did strength coaching first and then dived into um, the running coaching space. And originally, I didn't think that running coaching could be a job or like a, something that I could do full time. So I was doing the strength and running coaching. Um, but now I very much have seen that running coaching can be a primary, um, you know, focus for me. And um, I started running coaching with another group back in 2016. And then I, um, I founded my own LLC lift run perform in 2017. Um, and that is my own virtual online coaching for running and also strength training. Um, so now I primarily do some strength coaching, um, but also primarily online run coaching. Um, and then there's an, a, a collective of coaches that work together and we help around 250 people across the globe. And so how much would you say that injury prevention is a part of your training? I think um, it's a big part of the training. Obviously, if you're injured, you can't you can't run, you can't you can't perform. Um, so I think the biggest thing is education, especially when it comes to people who are newer in running. We do get a lot of people who are a little bit um, more experienced, so they're either coming off an injury or they've been injured before. But we do get a, a lot of greener runners, um, in which case we have to educate, and then it's education, right? It's just letting them know um, what they have to be aware of, how they have to listen to their bodies, even if their training plan says something they might need to adjust it and do something else for that given day because the goal is to stay injury free and training especially if you haven't trained since you know you are in rec soccer in middle school or whatever you kind of forget that it is very important to listen to your body and um, not necessarily doing exactly what the coach says all the time um, and so then as a coach being okay with with you know an athlete who's giving you the feedback of like I feel really really beat up today I need to take an extra day off and that's okay yeah, I mean, one of the things we hear a lot about and talk a lot about at our organization is core. You know, we hear over and over, like, you have to strengthen your core. That protects your back. And sometimes I think people sort of, they've heard it so many times that they sort of blow it off. So what are some of the, you know, kind of just basic core exercises or strength exercises that you recommend for athletes and even people that are just beginner athletes to kind of do on a regular or even daily basis? I think um, core, as runners, we can do core specifically. Um, so things such as um, planks, um, dead bugs. Um, we try to keep away from crunches, anything that really flexes the spine. Um, but core is, is one thing, but also strength training is another thing because what people don't realize is every time you pick up a weight, it's actually conditioning your core. You can't fit, unless you're letting everything go, you physically cannot pick up a heavy object without bracing your core. So what I would probably say is more important is just getting into a strength training routine, even if it's one day a week or two days a week, um, because when you pick those weights up, you have no choice but to really strengthen. And that you're getting deep into that transverse abdominis, which is really what's protecting everything around our middle. So I think core, you know, like you're saying is important, but also having a strength training routine where you're picking up weights and challenging your core and having to, you know, tense and flex that core every, you know, twice a week 
could is actually maybe a little bit more important. Um, but if we're going to say for argument's sake, what are some great core exercises? You know, things like planks, dead bugs, carries are excellent uh, methods of training your core. Um, things things like that where you're at, where you're just creating a whole lot of tension throughout the middle of your of your abdomen. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of having been in the running world myself. Like, I know a lot of runners often forget about strength training. They're like, I have to run all these miles. Like I don't have time for that. And that's, that's really like one of the main reasons people end up getting injuries is because they're not strengthening those, you know, and other parts of their body and including learning how to run. Okay. So you've got, you have had two things happen to you recently that, um, you know, that you've had to deal with in terms of recovery and getting back into the swing of things. So number one, you had a back injury, um, which, by the way, for those watching, Mary's a very fast runner. She is a 306 marathoner, which is really impressive. Uh, so I just love that. Um, but tell us about what happened to you and the injury that you had. So the injury started, um, it, it was kind of one of those chicken or the egg scenarios. It was a hamstring slash back slash not sure where it started. It just something was not right on the right side of my put back side of my body. Um, so I actually treated what was a, what I thought was a hamstring injury. And what I think now it was probably a little bit of hamstring and also some sciatic nerve damage going on. Um, so that was at the end of 2016. So we're talking a few years ago. Um, and I treated the hamstring thing first. And then one day, um, and, and when I say treat, I mean a lot of PT, a lot of strength training. Um, I even went and got something called PRP, which is where you have um, basically platelet-rich injections into that area to try to stimulate healing. Um, and nothing was working. And in fact, after the PRP, I woke up one day with a really sore back and I was like, oh my gosh, I think it's my back. It's not my hamstring. So um, at that point, started getting the MRIs and, and going down the rabbit hole of perhaps treating a back injury. Um, the interesting thing is that my MRIs were all pristine, perfect. Um, yet I still had this pain and nerve pain and back pain and, you know, no one could really point a finger as to what was going on. So long story short, um, I would say there isn't a necessary definitive diagnosis that I ever walked away with. One of them was a sacral stress fracture. One of them was hamstring tendinopathy. Um, one of them is SI joint hypermobility. So regardless of what the actual diagnosis is, I was in pain. It was something that took me out of my sport. I was, I was even up, you know, with the mental side of, of, of a chronic back injury, which I think if you're watching, you probably can relate with, you know, I was feeling very depressed, almost crazy because I felt like, you know, my MRI looked clean. Like why wasn't anyone believing that I had this pain? Um, and so I had a lot of injections, uh, ultimately injections that directed into my uh, into my discs tended to help. So even though my S my MRI was clean, those those disc related injections were the ones that ended up relieving my pain. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the pain did pop back up when I was pregnant. So I was really forced in the past seven, eight months to address what was going on and what's happening. Um, and so I think at the end of all of this, what I've learned is um, my SI joint is still hypermobile. The only thing that I've done to help with pain is strength train. And I'm now running. I'm not at the level where I was, but I'm pain free. I'm able to do things that I love. I'm able to lift heavy weights, but I've also trained very, very carefully up to that point. Um, and I truthfully think that, you know, core work, of course, but PT work, manual work, t sleeping more, really protecting my body um, helped get me to this point that is now, I would say, relatively pain-free on a day-to-day -day basis. So if SI joint pain is something that I'm going to have to deal with on a daily basis or for the rest of my life, I know how to mitigate it now because of what I've learned. So um, I feel pretty confident for my future and what I can eventually accomplish now that I actually had to address the root of the problem. And injections have, were very, very helpful for me. And who knows, maybe I'll get another one down the line, but I think at the end of the day, the overarching message that I was taught is that strength really trumps everything. Okay, that's really that's really good to hear. Now you mentioned being pregnant, which was the other thing I was gonna bring up because obviously injury and pregnancy are like two huge yeah. um, you know, things that many people have to deal with as athletes. And, and unfortunately for those of us who love to exercise and work out, like it takes time to recover. It takes time to get back to the place we once were. And, and sometimes it means we may never get, fully get back to the place we once were. So 
Um, do you see a lot of people trying to return too quickly in both yeah. of those situations? And talk to me a little bit about how detrimental that can be. I think um, running is a very, um, de very demanding sport, um, especially for a woman who's just had a baby. In fact, there, I was talking to another coach of their group about perhaps making for our coaching business um, kind of like a standard of like, we're not going to coach you if you're under X weeks postpartum. Um, because there has been um, some differing opinions uh, in terms of um, when a woman can return to running postpartum. Um, there was a recent research, a big research study that came out last May um, that actually suggested that um, three months postpartum is a bit more appropriate than what the old standard was, which was six weeks. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's tough as a running coach to, to be faced with a lot of women who are six weeks postpartum being told by their doctor, you're fine to work out. But then from the, from our side, which is the, re, I mean, we're not physical therapists. We do stay within our scope always. However, being faced with the knowledge that we know, which is like, look, the, the research shows that a woman might, it might be too quick for a woman to return uh, to running before 12 weeks postpartum, just based on science. Um, it's difficult to ignore as a coach. So um, that's something that I think is an ongoing or right now I'm me and a couple other coaches of the group are being faced with that because we're like, how's the best way to address this? We want people to be safe. It's not that we don't want you to run and you're not damaged, but at the same time, we want you to be healthy long-term. Um, and it is like, I get it when you have a baby, it's so easy to want to jump right back in and get as fit as possible and make up for lost time, especially because towards the end of the pregnancy, it is harder to move and your back hurts, your feet hurt, your everything hurts. So it's easy to not be restless. Um, so what we're battling as coaches right now is like, what's that fine line of like empowering somebody to get back to it and then holding them back? Um, because we want to keep somebody safe long term. That's most important. Um, but I think for running specifically, you can deal with all sorts of women's health issues, including prolapse, you've got SI joint issues. Um, I haven't seen too many disc specific issues. Um, but I mean, having a baby is a major trauma to the body. So that's something that, um, especially now after having my first baby, very aware of. Um, and I don't think I realized how much it all goes <laughs> and how quickly. So um, and how, old is, how old is he now? He's seven months. So okay. yeah. And, and it's so, yeah, go ahead. It's I mean, it took like my, uh, expectations were much different um, from where I am today. Like when I had him, I was like, all right, I'm ready. If I wasn't running, you know, if I was going to adhere to that rule that I just talked about the 12 weeks, I was like, I'm going to really hit it hard in the gym and do as much as I can to get back to it. And like, I would say I had to double my expectations. <laughs> so like where I am today is where I thought it would be probably three months ago. And that's okay because I learned through the process. Um, but that was something that I learned as a new mom is like, there was no, and, and you know what, some moms might be able to do it a little faster, but personally I had to kind of step back. I had to prioritize sleep. I was dealing with this SI joint injury and I wanted to make sure I did it the right way because for me being healthy long-term is most important. Um, so, you know, I, the other part I think is sleep, um, especially for the spine and for the back. Um, there's a lot of research that's out that just suggests that if you're not sleeping, your body isn't restoring itself. You're not able to really get your muscles to cooperate like they need to be. Um, so like for new moms, especially being able to get the sleep that you need is so important. So, um, you know, my son learned how to sleep the night pretty early, but I needed to learn how to reorganize my schedule. So while he was sleeping, I was figuring out like, okay, how am I going to do my work and take care of myself and take care of him and take care of everything. So I think, um, you know, social media is really wonderful because it connects us to connect me to you. Um, it connects a lot of people, but also it's important to realize that, um, everyone does have a different timeline and it's okay to be longer, take longer to get back or to just reconfigure your life because, um, having a baby is a major, major change and there's no perfect way to do it. You have to figure it out as a family unit. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, in, in terms of that comparison, because I know even for myself, um, coming back from, in, well, I've also come back from injury and come back from having two babies. And it is really easy to look at someone else and say, 
oh, well, you know, her baby's the same age as mine and look what she's doing. And I saw myself doing that. Um, and same, same thing with back injuries. You could look at someone who had a surgery or a different procedure and say, well, well they had the same thing as I did, but you know, and they're already doing totally. this. Um, I guess this will be the last question, but just what can you say about the importance of listening to your body? Because everybody is different and unique. And that's really, I mean, that's really what we have to go off of. So say just a few words about that. Uh, I mean, I think listening to your body is, our body is what we have, you know what I, you know what I mean? So um, if we're not listening to our body and we're just if we have something on the calendar, even if it's like go to PT and do this exercise, but maybe your body isn't ready to do it for whatever reason, sleep or whatever. Um, it's important to respect that. Um, and then also there, I would say there is probably a degree of knowing your body. So like perfect example, I woke up today. I went for a run yesterday, woke up today, supposed to go for a 45 minute run. And I, I felt beat up for my run yesterday. I'm still regaining strength. Like I'm very much, my head is where I, finished back in 2016 as a strong marathoner. And today I'm like starting way back at the bottom. So I went out for my run, but I was kind of like, you know, in my head, I was like, all right, I'm going to give it 10 minutes. And if I don't feel right, I'm going to stop. I'm going to go really, really slowly. Um, and I'm going to keep reminding myself throughout the whole run to go very slowly. And I'm going to say that the run I did was a walk with hopping, <laughs> um, but it's okay. I listen to my body. I feel better now that I went out and moved my body, but I also was able to not go out and um, beat myself up mentally for not being more recovered um, and also accept to dial it back if I needed to stop. So I think we all, you know, the older we get, hopefully the more we, we're learning how to listen to our bodies, how to dial it back, know that there's no shame in that. There's no shame in um, taking a day off or resting or, um, you know, even light movement. I think with, with back injuries, especially it can be, there's this, at least I experienced, like I'm a, I'm damaged. Like I got to a gym and I was like, I don't know what I can do without hurting myself. Um, but there actually is a lot of stuff you can do, um, without hurting yourself and actually helping yourself just movement and, you know, making your joints flow, whether it's walking, whether it's doing body weight exercises, whether it's doing a step up. So there's a lot of things that you can do and you can be empowered. And if you don't know what you're doing, then saddle up with a professional who does know and can empower you. So I think listening to your body is one thing, but then also partnering up with people who are smart and, um, and, and empowering and really believe that you can move through a lot of things that is really, it can be very empowering at the end of the, at the end of the day, especially with an injury that is chronic and um, can seem kind of like helpless a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like all the components are important. Your doctor, physical therapist, mm -hmm. like your friends and just putting everything together. There's no, that's one thing I've learned um, since working here with the spine health foundation is just that, there is no one path to recovery or success when it comes to injury. So um, I think that's great advice. Mary, thank you so much for joining us from this beautiful um, place with palm trees that you're at. We really appreciate it. Um, it's cold where I am. So um, thanks so much for your insight. Thank you. It was nice to see you.